so guys very good morning all of you and welcome to the session and uh, today we are going to discuss the governor generals and that is one of the important topics for the ssc exam because it is the topic from modern india and every time this question comes from this particular topic so students first of all please confirm your attendance then we are going to start the session so please confirm your attendance everyone okay janini jivitha good day, good morning and welcome to the session everyone welcome to the session and uh, apologies for delay because there was some technical error that was on our back end team so the technical error has been now rectified so the session might be 1 minute delay in fact so vijay good morning and welcome to the session everyone so welcome to the session all of you and good morning happy rakshabandhan to you too but the timings of the auspicious timings of rakshabandhan it is in evening so we decided to take the class to continue to conduct the class so that the student should get the give the best gift to their sisters and that is the selection of them so that should be the ideal gifts that should be bought by your personal money so personal things so guys now let's start the session let's start the session and here is the first question that is before you the question is ki who among the following abolished dual government system in bengal so who among the following is just abolished the dual government system is bengal is it robert live warren hastings Ro lord cornwallis or none of the above dual government system who abolished the dual government system in bengal so dual government system in bengal that was abolished by whom guys robert clive lord cornwallis warren hastings or none of the above what will be the correct answer hmm so therefore the without job the things are worthless but therefore i want you to prepare on this day as well so that next year once you will be in the job you can give the best gift to your sisters Okay, let's see the correct answer. Everyone is saying option C, that is Warren Hastings. So definitely, guys, the correct answer will be Warren Hastings. So correct answer will be Warren Hastings. Correct answer will be Warren Hastings. Now, if I talk about dual government, that means that the whole administration was divided into two parts. One is called Diwani. and second is called nizamat diwani simply means the tax collection rights and nizamat means the administration it means the administration so diwani was in the hand of british east india company and nizamat that was given to nawab of bengal nawab of bengal so from 1773 to 17 1765 to 1772 that was the dual government started by robert clive started by clive and it was ended it was ended by warren hastings so it was ended by warren hastings Seventeen seventy two to seventeen eighty five. So it was started by Rob, uh, Robert Clive and ended by Warren Hastings. Therefore, guys, correct answer will be option C. And if I talk about Lord Cornwallis, he is also called father of civil services in India. So Cornwallis seventeen eighty six to seventeen ninety three, and he is called the father of civil services, father of Indian. civil services therefore correct answer will be guys option c for this question that is warren hastings i hope my dear students that should be clear to all of you ki what is dual government dual government means ki the whole government was divided into two parts diwani that was taken by british east india company nizamat that was for the nawab of bengal and at that point of time nawab of bengal was nazmud dola who was the son of mir jafar therefore correct answer will be option c 
नाउ कम टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कि विच गवर्नर जनरल वॉज प्रोजिक्यूटेड फॉर इंपीचमेंट सो विच गवर्नर जनरल वॉज प्रोजिक्यूटेड फॉर इंपीचमेंट प्रोजिक्यूटेड फॉर इंपीचमेंट prosecuted for impeachment okay let's see the correct answer warren hastings robert clive lord cornwallis or lord wellesley so if i talk about guys prosecuted for impeachment that was warren hasting so warren hasting was prosecuted for impeachment but he was he there was no no concrete evidence was found against him so he was acquitted so he was set free therefore correct answer will be option a warren hastings and robert live he committed suicide he committed suicide and lord wellesley he is also known for the fourth anglo masur war that was held in 1799 in which tipu sultan died and he is also known for subsidiary alliance and he is also known for subsidiary alliance therefore correct answer will be guys option a that is warren hastings so he was the governor general who was prosecuted for impeachment but there was no concrete evidence was found therefore he was acquitted free so he was set free guys therefore correct answer will be what option a that is warren hastings and warren hastings ended the diarchy in bengal and he was the first governor general of bengal so through regulating act of regulating act of 1773 he became governor general of bengal he became governor general of bengal therefore correct answer will be hmm sir permanent zamindari system no no it was not started by wellesley it was started by cornwallis permanent settlement that was started by cornwallis in bihar bengal and odisha that was 19% of the total british area by cornwallis it was started very good sanjeev so it was not started by wellesley wellesley started subsidiary alliance so wellesley started subsidiary alliance in 1798 in fact clear okay now so 1798 to 1805 that is the time period of lord wellesley so he started subsidiary alliance and cornwallis started the permanent settlement system now come to the next question my dear students ki the tomb of cornwallis where it is located so where is the tomb of lord cornwallis is it in gazipur balia varanasi or gorakhpur so where is the tomb of cornwallis Cornwallis died in India he was not assassinated so he was suffering from high fever while coming from Calcutta to Varanasi in the midway he died in the way he died so where is the tomb of cornwallis and wellesley used to call himself as the bengal tiger okay so correct answer is option a guys that is in gazipur so gazipur it is a city in east up lord cornwallis 1786 to 1793 and in 1793 guys he introduced permanent settlement system permanent settlement 
in three places in three areas that is Bihar, Bengal and Odisha. That was 19 percent of the total British area. British India area. And guys, yesterday CPO notification was out. So, those students who are willing to fill the form of CPO, so the notification or the advertisement is already being declared and we have taken session on it. Sanjay Tomar sir has taken the session. So, those students who are willing to go for the uniformed services, so this is the best chance, one of the best chances guys. Therefore, tomb of Gazi, Cornwallis, it is located in Gazipur. Gazipur, it is in the eastern UP area. Now, come to the next question, ki who was the first Indian native ruler to accept the system of subsidiary alliance? To accept the system of subsidiary alliance, who was the Indian native ruler? Is it Sindhyas of the Gwalior? Okay, one option is missing. You can write, you can write option D that is as Nawab of Awadh. Nawab of Awadh. Okay, so who was the first Indian ruler to accept the system of subsidiary alliance? Uh, by today itself, the scorecard will be released. Okay, let us see the correct answer guys. The correct answer is option B that is the Nizam of Hyderabad. Nizam of Hyderabad accepted the subsidiary alliance. Now guys, if I talk about subsidiary alliance, the pioneer, pioneer of subsidiary alliance was Duplex, who was a French governor. Who was a French governor and it was started in India by and in India it was started by Lord Wellesley. Seventeen ninety eight to eighteen zero five eighty. And the first was Nizam of Hyderabad. So first was Nizam of Hyderabad seventeen ninety-eight followed by the next person that was Masur after death of Tipu Sultan 1799 followed by third that is Tanjore 1799 itself and fourth is Awadh 1801. So this was started by Lord Wellesley that is the subsidiary alliances. Nawab of Awadh was not second, Nawab of Awadh technically was on the fourth number. First was Nizam of Hyderabad 1798, then Masur 1799, Tanzor 1799 and Awadh 1801. So correct answer will be guys option B that is the Nizam of Hyderabad. So I hope Sanjeev it is clear to all, clear to you. I hope it is clear to all of you. Okay, guys. So now let us move to the next question. Now come to a very easy question. Ki Sati system was abolished by whom? So who abolished this Sati system? So who abolished this Sati system? 
इज इट लॉर्ड वॉरिन हेस्टिंग लॉर्ड वेलेजली विलियम बेंटिक और लॉर्ड रिपन सो हु अबॉलिश सती सिस्टम ओके लेट सी द करेक्ट आंसर वेरी गुड गाइज सो दैट इज अजी क्वेश्चन सती सिस्टम दैट इज एंटी सती लॉ एंड इट वॉज बिंग इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाई लॉर्ड विलियम बेंटिक 1829 to 1835 is the time period and anti sati law that was in 1829 and it was did by lord william bentick and it was due to the efforts of of raja ram mohan roy it was due to the efforts of raja ram mohan roy so that was lord william bentick and widow remarriage widow remarriage act 1856 and that was due to the effort of ishwar chandra vidyasagar so this was due to the effort of ishwar chandra Vidya Sagar, and it was did during the time of Lord Canning, eighteen fifty six to eighteen sixty two. So widow remarriage that was due to the effort of Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, hmm. with the help of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, and yes, Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar that he did the during his time period. Uh, due to the effort of Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, Widow Remarriage Act was passed, and that was passed by Lord Canning. So during the time of Lord Canning, this act was passed. That was Widow Remarriage Act. So I hope, guys, it should be clear to all of you. And Lord Ripon, he was a very liberal voice, right? Eighteen eighty to eighteen eighty four. So he wrote the book. that is the duty of the ages he wrote the book that is duty of the ages therefore correct answer will be option c and lord bentick through charter act of 1833 so one thing you can note it down about lord bentick so through charter act act of 1833 the governor general of bengal became governor general of india so governor general of bengal became governor general of india therefore correct answer will be guys option c hmm. lord ripon ended vernacular press act he just introduced the local self government that is the form of panchayati raj system regular census that started by him in 1881 first time regular census started so in 1881 regular census 1882 father of local self government that was all started by him so he wrote the book also that is the duty of the ages now कम टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन गाइज की अवध दैट वॉज एनेक्स्ट बाई ब्रिटिश एम्पायर इन इंडिया बाई पॉलिसी ऑफ सब्सिडरी अलायंस बाई पॉलिसी ऑफ डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ लैब्स बाई डिक्लेयरिंग द स्टेट एज मैल एडमिनिस्टर्ड और बाई वेजिंग वॉर सो अवध हाउ इट वॉज एनेक्स्ट बाई ब्रिटिश ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी सो अवध हाउ इट वॉज एनेक्स्ट बाई ब्रिटिश ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी कैन यू टेल मी okay let's see the correct answer guys vijay it is not option b guys it is option c it is option c although we can say ki that was the doctrine of lapse policy was not directly applicable doctrine of lapse policy c doctrine of lapse policy that was not applicable in fact not applicable 
रीजन वॉज दिस कि वाजिद अली शाह प्लस हजरत महल दे हैव देयर ओन बायोलॉजिकल सन दे हैव देयर ओन बायोलॉजिकल सन दैट वॉज बिरजी कादिर Bilges Kadir so the policy of doctrine of lapse was not applicable guys hmm. nawab says has how many children it has they have many children so the main we know if i ask you ki how many child how many children akbar has or how many children humayu has so you cannot say the exact number you cannot say the exact number because at that point of time guys polygamy was a very common practice polygamy was a very common practice but we only know the name of that son who became the ruler who became the next successor therefore we only remember the name of the son because real number of wives and real number of son it is very difficult to find out reason is this at that point of time it they it was polygamy was very common practice in the upper class or the princely class in hindu society also in our medieval time period the polygamy was a very common practice so they not only have their wives they have their concubines and other ladies who were serving under him so through them they have their children so we only remember the name of those children who be those people who are important or the name of that son who become the next successor so i hope sanjeev it is clear to all to you and other students as well ki to know exact number of children exact number of wife it is practically very difficult reason is this at that point of time polygamy was a very common practice so they have many uh wives many servants many concubines so exact number is to say exact number 8 9 10 11 12 so that was very difficult i hope it is clear guys ki they have their own biological son birjis kadir who was the successor so the reason was this ki it was by declaring the state that is mal administered so the people the british officer said ki now our this not being properly administered by nawab wajid ali shah so for a better administration we are taking this place we are just annexing our for a better administrative structure so they took for the better administrative structure so which was a very completely false reason therefore the soldiers of avadh soldiers of avadh they became unhappy soldiers of avadh they became unhappy or dissatisfied with the decision with the decision of british east india company and in the british east india company 75000 aprox soldiers they were from avadh aprox soldiers was from avadh therefore correct answer will be option c that is by declaring the state at is being mal administered therefore correct answer will be guys option c and it was like a cutting the cake cutting the cherry of a cake so it was like a cutting a cherry of a cake and that was did by lord delhousie so that was did by lord delhousie Eighteen forty-eight to eighteen fifty-six. So that was did by Lord Dalhousie, and he was the youngest Governor General of India. Just at the age of thirty-six year, he became the Governor General. Therefore, correct answer will be guys option A. So he was youngest Governor General. Of India, that is British India. youngest governor general of british india therefore correct answer will be option c now come to the next question ki during whose rule widow remarriage act was implemented so during whose rule widow remarriage act was implemented is it dalhousie canning sir henry harding or lord lawrence 
so during whose time period guys the widow remarriage act was implemented and guys if you are finding session interesting and informative so don't forget to like and share the session and also subscribe our example english medium prep by example okay let's see the correct answer that i have already discussed guys widow remarriage act that was implemented during the time of lord canning it was being drafted during the time of of delhousie and implemented during time of canning implemented during the time of canning therefore correct answer will be option b and widow remarriage act was of 1856 the act was of 1856 so drafted during the time of delhousie implemented during the time of canning and during the time of canning budget budget system was introduced budget system was introduced therefore correct answer will be guys option b that is lord canning now the first railway line that was started in india in which period first railway line that was started in india during the time of which british governor general so when it was started in fact they are asking the year the first railway line that was started in which year Okay let's see the correct answer guys the first railway line that was started in year 1853 during the time of lord delhousie and lord delhousie guys during the time in 1853 the first railway line started from bori bandar from bori bandar to thane that was 34 kilometers that was 34 kilometers so during his time period railway started post and postal services postal services started then woods dispatch woods dispatch came then establishment of pwd pwd that was also established during his time period so correct answer will be guys option a that is 1853 hmm. postal services also started by this woods dispatch also came establishment of pwd that is the public work department that was all started in the time of lord delhousie therefore correct answer will be guys option a now who was the first person to conduct census for the first time so which of person or which governor general conducted the census for the first time is it lord ripon lord lytton lord dufferin or lord mayo so who conducted the census for the first time okay let's see the correct answer okay vijay is saying option a sanjeev is saying option d 
ओके ओके वेरी गुड संजीव विजय ओके ग्रेट गाइस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल प्लीज रीड द क्वेश्चन केयरफुली द क्वेश्चन बिफोर अस इज कि हु कंडक्टेड द सेंसस इन इंडिया फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम फर्स्ट टाइम सेंसस वाज कंडक्टेड इन ईयर 1872 बाय लॉर्ड मेयो 1869 to 1872 that was conducted by lord mayo and guys first regular census that was conducted in year 1881 that was did through lord rip 1880 to 1880 so only the thing that changed there that is the regular word so if the regular word is there then your answer will be different and if only census is there the answer will be different so regular word then your answer will be lord ripon and if it is normal census then it will be lord mayo 1879 to 18 1869 to 1872 and there is a mayo college mayo college that is in ajmer it's a very expensive college and that is located that is named after lord mayo so that is named after lord mayo there is a mayo college in ajmer which is named after him very expensive college guys one of the costliest colleges of india so i hope it is clear to all of you is it clear to all of you that is in rajasthan mayo college is that clear guys shall i move to the next question and during the time of dufrin 1884 to 1888 there was formation of indian national congress in 1885 so i hope it is clear ओके नाउ गाइज माई क्वेश्चन टू यू इज की हु कंडक्टेड आउट ऑफ दिस फोर हु कंडक्टेड द फर्स्ट दिल्ली दरबार सो आउट ऑफ दिस फोर हु कंडक्टेड फर्स्ट दिल्ली दरबार आउट ऑफ दिस फोर हु कंडक्टेड फर्स्ट दिल्ली दरबार now one question from my side ki out of these four who conducted this first delhi darbar first delhi darbar ओके वेरी गुड संजीव जीविता वेरी गुड गुड गाइज सो दैट वॉज डेड बाय लॉर्ड लिटन लॉर्ड लिटन कंडक्टेड द फर्स्ट दिल्ली दरबार दैट वॉज इन ईयर एटीन हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी सेवन एंड इट वॉज हिज टाइम पीरियड इज एटीन हंड्रेड एंड एटीन सेवेंटी सिक्स टू एटीन एटी so he conducted the first delhi darbar in which queen victoria victoria was given the title of kesare hind queen victoria was given the title of kesare hind second delhi darbar that was held in 1903 during the time of lord curzon 1899 to 1905 and the third delhi darbar that was held in 1911 third delhi darbar
1911. And that was did by whom? Third Delhi Darbar. Who did the third Delhi Darbar, guys? Now, my question to you is ki, who did the third Delhi Darbar? Third Delhi Darbar. That is Lord Harding second. Very good. So, that was Lord Harding second. 1910 to 1916. From 1916 to 1921, we have the Lord Chelmsford. So, that is Lord Harding, the third Delhi Darbar that was held in 1911. Therefore, guys, correct answer will be Lord Mayo. He was the person who conducted the first census and if the word is added regular census, then your answer will change to Lord Ripon. So, only the regular word can change your answer. Okay. Now, guys, this was about the question that was Lord Mayo. Now, let us move to the next question. Yes, during his time period in the third Delhi Darbar, it was announced to transfer the capital of India from Calcutta to Delhi. That was announced in 1911. The complete transfer went in 1912. So, I hope that should be clear to all of you guys. Now, come to the next question. Ki during whose time period the Viceroy titled the during the time period of for which of the following viceroy, the title of Rai Bahadur Khan Bahadur began to comfort Indians. So, this type of title Rai Bahadur Khan Bahadur, this was given during the time of which governor general or the viceroy that you can say. So, actually the voice right is the voice right, not governor general because governor general was till 1857. So, which voice Roy? The title of Rai Bahadur Khan Bahadur that was given. Let's see the correct answer, guys. Rai Bahadur Khan Bahadur. Guys, Rai Bahadur Khan Bahadur title, these were given to Indians who were either rich people or they were rich people or they were like, uh, you can say, okay, they were either rich people or they were educated, highly educated. highly educated people so that they can separate themselves separate themselves from national movement so that india can become india can become weak and this type of, of title that was given during the time of lord lytton so lord lytton wanted to weaken the national movement so that he started giving the title of Rai Bahadur Khan Bahadur to Indians. They were given to Indians so that they can separate themselves from the national movement and they should become pro-British. They should become pro-British and separate themselves from the national movement. Therefore, correct answer will be guys Lord Lytton. So, Lord Lytton used to give this type of title started giving either they were the rich people so that they can not they cannot support economically the, the freedom struggle or they are very educated so that they should not give their intellectual support and they should become pro-British. Therefore, this title was given to Indians by British. So, I hope it is clear to all of you 1876 to 1880 that is the time period of Lord Lytton. So, 1876 to 1880. 1880, that is the time period of Lord Lytton. Now, 
which viceroy was murdered during his tenure so out of these four which viceroy was murdered during his term is it lord curzon lord mayo lord ripon or lord wellesley so which viceroy was murdered during his term which viceroy was murdered during his term guys which viceroy was murdered during his tenure so the viceroy that was murdered during his tenure that was lord mayo 1869 to 1870 and he was assassinated by sher khan afridi who was a afghan prisoner he was an afghan prisoner while inspecting cellular jail of andaman and nicobar while inspecting the cellular jail of andaman and nicobar he was assassinated by a prisoner that was sher khan afridi so sher khan afridi ha huh, yes lord mayo in kalapani so this place that is the cellular jail of andaman and nicobar this was often called as kalapani because you all know ki andaman nicobar it is a island it is in the bay of bengal so once the prisoner will escape the cellular jail where he is going to go he will jump in sea and that is not anyone is not that much big swimmer so come to cross the complete sea so therefore it is called kala pani it does not mean ki the water around this was black you cannot skip the place you cannot skip the place therefore it was called kala pani i hope my dear students is that clear to all of you is that clear to all of you guys and in 1872 he was assassinated by sher khan afridi an afghan prisoner while inspecting the cellular jail of andaman and nicobar now let's come to the next question next question is guys ki who is responsible for encouraging the local self government in india so which viceroy introduced the local self government in india is it lord mayo lord lytton lord canning or lord ripon So what will be the correct answer is Okay let's see the correct answer guys who was responsible for the local self government local self government guys that is lord ripon so lord ripon that is the local self government 1880 so father of local self government that is did in the form of panchayati raj so now it is also there in the form of panchayati raj so it is now in form of panchayati raj now it is in the form of panchayati raj so it was in the form of panchayati raj that is lord ripon and he also started in 1881 regular census
एल्बर्ट बिल कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी ही फेस्ड एल्बर्ट बिल कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी आफ्टर विच ही वेंट टू इंग्लैंड इन ईयर एटीन एटी फोर सो करेक्ट आंसर विल बी गाइज ऑप्शन डी दैट इज लॉर्ड रिपन नाउ आर्कोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया दैट वॉज स्टैब्लिश इन द पीरियड ऑफ विच पर्सन Archaeological Survey of India was established in the period of Warren Hastings, Wellesley, Lord Curzon, or Lord Bentinck. So, Archaeological Survey of India, this was established in the period of which Governor General or Viceroy? Warren Hastings, Lord Wellesley, Curzon, or Bentinck? so asi that is the archaeological survey of india okay vijay is saying option d hmm sanjeev is also saying option d okay guys let me tell you the correct answer archaeological survey of india asi that was established in year 1861 it was established in year 1861 guys so if it is 1861 then it will be 1856 to 1862 so that is during the time of lord curzon and alexander cunningham was the first director general was first director general of asi was first director general of asi that is lord canning so correct answer will be guys lord curzon and the 1857 revolt that was during his time period and he was the last governor general and first viceroy last governor general and first viceroy of india last governor general and first viceroy of india that was canning definitely it is canning 1861 so 1861 is the time period of canning now come to the next question consider the statements robert clive was the first governor general of bengal william bentinck was the first governor general of india so which of the following statement is true sir it's given curzon in option so yes curzon it is given in option let me check yes option it is given curzon so correct answer will be curzon in fact now come to the next question guys ki robert clive was the first governor general of bengal william bentinck was the first governor general of india which of the following statement is or are true so only facts is saying option c okay sanjeev is hmm ha previous question governor that is curzon it is given in the option yes janani janini hmm now guys see first of all if i say ki robert clive was the first governor of bengal so he was governor of bengal through regulating act regulating act of 1773 governor of bengal was designated as governor general of bengal governor of bengal was designated as governor general so it was lord war in hastings lord war in hastings william bentinck was the first governor general of india this is correct statement this is wrong statement because 
थ्रू चार्टर एक्ट चार्टर एक्ट ऑफ 1833 गवर्नर जनरल ऑफ बंगाल वाज टर्म वाज डेजिग्नेटेड एज गवर्नर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया गवर्नर जनरल ऑफ बंगाल वाज डेजिग्नेटेड एज गवर्नर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया सो करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ओनली Previous question, okay. Oh, oh, canning. That is, it is written Curzon. No, no, it is canning. So that should be canning. In fact, that should be canning. So it is a DTP error. so archaeological survey of india that was established during the time of canning so that was established during the time of lord canning so it is canning it is not curzon yes it is not canning it is curzon it is not curzon it is canning so it is not curzon it is canning Hmm. Current time period is eighteen ninety nine to eighteen zero five. That is Ancient Monument Protection Act. See, Ancient Monuments Protection Act that was passed during the time of Lord Curzon. Ancient Monument Protection Act that was passed during the time of Curzon. So. Ancient Monument Protection Act that was passed during the time of Curzon. I hope it is clear, Vijay. So sometimes Ancient Monument Protection Act, if they ask, then it will be Lord Curzon, and if they are asking ASI, that is Archaeological Survey of India, then it is Canning. Ancient Monument Protection Act that is during the time of Curzon. it is ancient monument preservation act not protection act it is ancient monument preservation act that was during the time of lord curzon ancient monument preservation act i hope now it is confusion is clear to everyone ki what was about curzon what is about canning ancient monument preservation act that was during the time of curzon ancient monument preservation act okay now let's come to the next question we have already discussed this question Now let's come to the next question. That permanent settlement system was introduced during the tenure of. So who introduced the permanent settlement system? Permanent settlement system was introduced by which governor general? permanent settlement system guys that was introduced by lord cornwallis very good so that was in 1793 and lord cornwallis from cornwallis 1786 to 1793 this is also called zamindari system 
and in this system zamindars were declared owner of the land and they have to pay tax they have to pay tax by collecting from farmer and whatever the tax they used to pay out of the total tax Eleven by ten part that was taken by British East India Company, and one by eleven part was given to Zamindar as commission. So Zamindar used to harass the farmers so that they can pay more and more tax, so that Zamindar can get more and more commission. And this was introduced in Bihar, Bengal, and Odisha. Introduced in Bihar, Bengal. and odisha that is 19% of the total british area hmm. 19% of the total british area so i hope guys it is clear to all of you that was did by lord cornwallis okay guys so students with this we come up with the end of today's session and don't go anywhere because the next session will be of sanjay tomar sir so next session will be of quant so just the class went a bit longer therefore i have taken a bit time so you don't have to go anywhere because after this the next session will be of sanjay tomar sir so guys with this we conclude the session of today and thanks for watching the session and wish you a very happy raksha bandhan to all my dear students so well this is the time to give the best gift to your sisters so that was all for the day bye bye everyone do take good care of yourself